again, uh, we are now nearing to our conclusion of our series, Truly Free. Okay, let us prepare our hearts as we uh, now dive into the last two chapters of the letter of Paul to the Galatians. So, so far, just to summarize before we enter to chapter 5, chapters 1 and 2, Paul defended his apostleship in order to legitimize or authenticate the gospel that he preached. Why? Because the intruders, those who are uh, visiting the Asia Minor during that time, especially in Galatia, that created some confusion in the church, were not only preaching another gospel, which is not actually a gospel at all, but a perverted gospel, was also accusing and spreading rumors in Galatia, in the cities of Galatia, diva, Pisidia of Antioch, Lystra, Iconium, and Derby. So they are actually spreading the news and other parts of Asia Minor that Apostle Paul was a second-rate apostle. And the gospel, therefore, that he is preaching is abbreviated. It's incomplete. So that's why they, they're saying we came from Jerusalem. We have the imprimatur of the apostles, the pillars of the church. We came from the mother congregation. Therefore, you listen to us because we bear the full gospel. So here comes Paul uh, hearing about the thing uh, that's going on in Galatia, wrote them a letter, probably on their way to Jerusalem to attend a council meeting in Acts 15, which was recorded there, with Barnabas and some other apostles or disciples. They're on their way, and Paul was right, dictating this letter, uh, sending it urgent, urgent mail to Galatia because of the pressing issues that they were facing. So in chapters 1 and 2, just to recall, Paul defended his apostleship. Paul is saying, I encountered Jesus, I met him on the road to Damascus, and the gospel that I am preaching to you, I did not receive it from any of the apostles. I got it from the source himself. So he was defending his apostleship and authenticating, therefore, the gospel that he was preaching. In chapter 3 and 4, the richness of Apostle Paul's knowledge of the Old Testament uh, connecting them and analyzing them and presenting them the point of the gospel, that the gospel that he was preaching, the evangelion that he was preaching, was not something new. It was promised by God long ago. It has been God's intention and purpose long time ago. And it was, it was only came into fulfillment when Jesus Christ came and died on the cross. Jesus and the good news that I've been preaching to you is not an invention of man. It is not a tradition of the church. It has been God's plan and purpose and good news from the very start as He promised the new exodus to His very own people. The ultimate deliverance from sin and death was realized in the Messiah by the name of Jesus himself. And uh, by God's grace, we're able to navigate through the theological foundations of Apostle Paul in chapter 3 and 4. But in chapters 5 and 6, Paul now is dealing with the practical implications of what it means to be truly free as the new creation community or people of God in this broken world. So as believers, as a follower of Christ, as people who believe in Jesus, we are actually the new creation people because the new creation has been launched, the, the, the kingdom of God has been inaugurated, there is now a parallel, so this is an overlapping age because the age to come has broke into the present, so although the present evil age is still ongoing and will come to end, but the promised age to come has been in motion when Christ died and rose again from the dead. So now that's why the analogy of Paul of the good news is that Jesus Christ gave himself for us and rescued us from this present evil age. Now, so in this conversation, now let's join together as we understand Paul's uh, uh, teachings on the implications of our freedom in Christ as the new creation church or the new creation people of God in this broken world. So the title of our conversation is called to freedom. Now, Paul now would elaborate and say, you have not only been set free, you are actually called to freedom. You have been called to a free life. Part of our journey and being in Abrahamic family or in covenant family that God has promised to Abraham, the seed and the land, you are actually called. And what does it mean to be called? And we will understand here the practical application and implication of this in our lives as we enter the last two chapters. 
And in this conversation, this is the truth that I want you to pick up as Apostle Paul would explain that our freedom in Christ is expressed in serving others through life. How do we now live this out? It, this freedom is actually expressed in our serving others and serving other people through love. Sa pamamagitan ng pagmamahal. We are in bondage of sin and death. Diba? This is a usual illustration. Diba? And Jesus or God bought us, redeemed us, bought us back, and are, we are set free. Now we are a free man. The analogy of a man sold in slavery in the marketplace. But we were not only set free to live our own lives, we have been adopted by the one who bought us into the family of the one who bought us. We were adopted in the family of God. And here comes Paul is saying, actually the end expression of our freedom is you go back to slavery, but no longer slave to sin, but slavery to God and to righteousness. From slavery, you have been set free, included into the family, but the ultimate goal of that, the ultimate expression of that, you consider yourselves a servant and a slave to God for righteousness. Here's the piece, the actual, actual, the actual thing that happened. In those days, a, a slave, particularly among the Jews, a slave that has been set free by the master, because the master is so good, he has been set free, di ba? Every seven years kasi, pinalalaya nila yung slave, eh, may, may year of jubilee. But because the master is good and he treated you as family, the slave now, out of his gratitude, his expression is, I don't want to live as a free man out there. I will, be, I will be in danger. Who will provide for me? So the usual response of a slave is to commit himself to the master and I will be a slave to you for life. That's the term doulos. No wonder Apostle Paul would always introduce himself, Paul, a slave of Jesus Christ. A slave that has been set free from slavery of sin and death and selfishness, but actually ended up as a slave to Christ. Out of his volition and out of his willing will or his willingness, now he is no longer uh, by force being a slave, but committing himself as a doulos to Jesus Christ. And in that practice during that time, binubutas po yung kanilang yung ear. Kaya ang mga slave, the doulos, have, have earrings. So they, they have to announce it that it is now my own decision. I have been set free by this master, actually, but it is now my own decision and I commit myself for life to this master. Wow. And here Paul would explain the implications of that in the next two chapters, okay? Verse 1 of chapter 5. Just to recall, Apostle Paul started, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Therefore, stand firm. Stay free in the NLT, in the New Living Translation. Stay free then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Now that you have been set free, stay free and don't go back. Don't go back. Alam niyo yung imagery dito, the yoke. How many, for those who have grown up in the province, the yoke, is, you see that in a cow. Di ba yung kaho yan na pag eh? The cow, they, they place the yoke in this cow, and that's heavy. The imagery is this, is that when the yoke is lifted up, you stand straight. You stand. Uh, you stay free. You, you, you've been released. Ang sarap kaya ng pakaramdam na wala na yung bigat sa leeg mo. That's the imagery of Paul. Do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. And I could not, I could not help hearing Jesus in the gospel saying, those who are tired and heavy laden and burdened of this religion, of this, the Torah, the legalism of the Jewish people in Jerusalem, come to me and I will give you rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The imagery is the same. My yoke is easy. Follow me. Because the, there is still a yoke, but not comparable to the yoke of slavery. Because we are being set free as a slave of sin and death and selfishness and everything. But actually, out of our own thankfulness and indebtedness to the master who is good to us, is we consider ourselves doulos to him for life. It's no longer because we have been required. You're serving because I love you. Diba? Kasi actually, if you think about it, 
mas, you're better off in that house than going alone outside. You're better off there because you're no longer considered as a servant, you're considered as a family. And Paul said, that is for freedom. So please, cherish the freedom, value it, do not go back to the yoke of slavery. Israel, Jewish people, remember your forefathers who have easily forgotten and said, bring us back to Egypt simply because we miss the food, the smell, and everything. They don't know what they were talking about. And Paul continues, said, mark my words. Listen carefully. Wow. Mark my words. I, Paul, tell you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no value at all. In other words, if you still count obeying the Torah through the circumcision, that is the ground for you to be accepted into the family of God, what you are actually saying is what Christ has done on the cross is nothing. You actually nullify what Christ has done on the cross in your behalf. Again, Paul said, I declare to every man who lets himself be circumcised that he is obligated to obey the whole law. Well, it's your decision. But remember, when you do that, you are nullifying what Christ has done. You cannot be both. And of course, when you do that, circumcision is just the first step. There's more. And the moment you go there, that direction, you are obligated. You are now putting yourself on the same yoke of slavery, on the same bondage of the forefathers, of your forefathers. So be careful. This is the freedom that we have received from Christ is that we are free from the works of of the law. And Paul continues saying, you are trying to be justified by the law, have been alienated from Christ, you have been separated, you have fallen away from grace. If that's the path that you actually do, if you are trying to justify yourself, the word justification is make yourself acceptable in the family of God. And if you think that's the way for you by obeying the works of the law, Therefore, listen carefully, you have been separated, you have been alienated again, you are going back from, from that former state, you have actually fallen from the grace that was expressed in the death and resurrection of Jesus. By the way, just to clarify something, when Paul was talking about the works of the law, he is not against good works. We already have clarified that. We are not saved by works. It's not that, that what Paul was referring was not good works, the moral good works that we are. That's, that's part of our lives. What he is actually talking, talking about is the works of the law, primarily the circumcision, the observance of Sabbath, and the food laws. So I have to make it that clear because it's confusing. Yan eh, na, hindi na, we are not saved by the works of the law, so we can just do whatever evil thing. No, 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 that's, that, that is not what Paul is talking about. He is not talking about the moral law. He's actually specifically talking about the works of the law that these intruders were saying that if you do this, you will be accepted into the Abrahamic family of, of God. So Paul now continues saying, for through the Spirit, we who are in the Messiah eagerly await by faith the righteousness for which we hope. Until the righteousness, until the faith, we have been looking forward for that. It is only through the Spirit that we eagerly await by faith the righteousness. In contrast again uh, to the works of the law, the path of the law. But for those who are in the Messiah, for through the Spirit, we await. So very important, the role of the Spirit, the role of faith in the new covenant, in the Messiah. In comparison to the works of the law and the Torah and the observance, Paul now is saying, we await. In the Spirit, we await for the promise, uh, righteousness, the hope, the promise of the coming Messiah who will give us the right standing with God, not based on our human effort, but based on the faithfulness of the Messiah himself. And Paul continued, for in Christ Jesus, he said, for in Jesus, in the Messiah, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. In other words, actually, wala naman, di, wala naman yun eh. Yung circumcised ka or hindi ka circumcised. Actually, that's not. There's no value in it. 
whether you, the persons that are circumcised could brag or the uncircumcised because they were better than you. No, 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 no. Paul is saying, for in Christ Jesus, neither of these two has any value. Now, listen to the last statement of Paul. The only thing that counts, the only thing that matters now in the Messiah is our faith express itself through love. In other translation, faith working through love. Beautiful, no? That's why Paul and James are not in, in conflict. That's why James, show me your faith if there is no work. Because the real faith is expressed through work, through love. No wonder, if you read the Ap Apostle Paul's letter and all the apostles, they are in line with one another. And here comes Paul saying it so plainly and so beautifully. The only thing that matters in the Messiah, in this new age, in this new creation, is faith expressing itself through love. That's why the truth that I'm sharing with you today is that our freedom in Christ is actually expressed in serving others through love. It's not all about ourselves not being secluded and it's not being an, a hermit or, or nagiging mag, mag isolate ka for your own self, but it's, it's expressing, that faith is expressed through love. And that love is in serving the community. Paul could not even, uh, he would explain it in a very clear and simple manner just to, to, to convey the message to these listeners in Galatia na yung pananampalataya, the faith that you have now in Christ, it's not something about religious and the religious statements that you brag about in the old times or in the old uh, traditions of the of the Torah, but it is actually seen and manifested in the way we relate to one another. And Paul would elaborate that in the next uh, verses to come in the passages, and he would end actually Galatians on that practical note. And then Paul, reflecting on their journey as as followers of Christ, he said, "You were running a good race." Who cut in on you to keep you from obeying the truth? Paul now is pointing to, the, to their experience that you were actually running a good race. Everything was smooth. From the last time I visited you, you were actually running a good race. Okay na yung takbo mo, eh, the, your emotions and your, the, your journey as a church. You were running a good The imagery of athletic imagery here, Paul would use the metaphor of, of, of sports. You were running a good race. You picture this in your mind in a marathon. And then you're running, you're running so fast, and you're running on your you're running good in your lane, and somebody cut you that made you stumble and fall. And Paul is saying, You were running, you were pastors, you actually are doing good. Who cut you? Now Paul now would uh, go back again to the intruders. Who cut in on you to keep you from obeying the truth? And he would play a play of words here, yung cut here because of the circumcision. It's really interesting how Paul would use uh, words, a play of words, in trying to uh, imp implicate the, the intruders in Galatia. As a church, Galatia, you were doing good. The last time we visited you, Paul and Barnabas, we could recall, you're okay. You believe in the Messiah, you're doing well. And all of a sudden, I saw you stumbling and fall. Who did this to you? And Paul continues saying, that kind of persuasion, whoever is doing this, does not come from the one who calls you. Connecting to chapter 1, why have you easily deserted the one who called you? And that, the one who calls you is God, the one who calls you into freedom. I, let, I want to let you know, Galatians, who, that for there's no doubt, the kind of persuasion, whoever is persuading you, who's, whoever is that person or group of people who are trying to lure you, and distract you, this thing does not come from the one who calls you. And listen to Paul. And Paul would use, Paul used a, uh, a proverb just to drive a point. A little yeast works through the whole batch of dough. A proverb that says, Baka, maybe you're justifying, anyway, the issue is just small. No, 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 no. As small as a yeast, a little yeast, if you allow that in your midst as a church, that can blow up. And you may not be prepared for the destruction and that it can cause your, in your midst. So you better watch out, Galatians. This is not a little and minor thing. That's actually Paul is trying to say. This is not something that you should ignore. This is actually an important issue. I am confident, Apostle Paul said, I am confident, may kumpiyansa ako, I am confident in the Lord that you will take no other view. I like Paul here. Alam nyo, at the end of the day, 
Paul is saying, I know you, you know me. I'm confident in the Lord. And my confident is not in you, in the Lord, that you will take no other view, of course, implying other than the view that we shared with you. The one who is throwing you into confusion, the one who is persuading you, the one who is throwing you into confusion, whoever that may be, will have to pay the penalty. Of course, there is a leader who created that issue in Galatia. Probably he was referring to the leader of the intruders or someone in Galatia himself na naging contact person and became, he became now the leader that is very, very influential in the church that started propagating and casting doubts among the members in Galatia. And Paul would allude to that and said, the one, remember, this letter is being read to the Galatian church, to their own hearing, and probably that one that Paul was referring to was seated there or there or there and could hear. I could imagine the, the emotions that was going on in Galatia, the one who is throwing you into confusion, the one who is guilty, the leader of the gang, whoever that may be will have to pay the penalty that he has caused. The destructions. Paul was saying, yes, there is someone who is guilty and responsible. Brothers and sisters, he continued, if I am still preaching, listen carefully, if I am still preaching circumcision as they claim, because they, the, the Jewish intruders and the, these people who are creating confusion in Galatia were actually saying, See, Paul, actually, he preached circumcision. He is actually preaching circumcision. I don't know long why he came to Galatia. He did not tell you. He is pleasing you. So the, this group of uh, intruders and this group of uh, Jewish believers, uh, the legalists, were saying, actually, si Apostle Paul, he was also preaching up circumcision. Sa ibang churches, that's his message. But we don't know why he did not tell you in Galatians. Maybe that's why he was being accused of pleasing people. And Paul alluded to that and said, if I am still preaching circumcision as they claim, in my old life, I am, or I was. But today, no. But if I am still preaching circumcision as some of them have already uh, spread the rumors, why am I still being persecuted? Tama naman. Kung I, if I am still preaching, why are they persecuting me? The very reason that why they are targeting me because I no longer consider circumcision as the mark of the new covenant people of God. In that case, sabi ni Paul, if I'm still preaching circumcision, in that case, the offense of the cross has been abolished. Ano yung, ano yung offense of the cross? If you read Gal- uh, for Corinthians, Paul mentioned that the cross of Jesus Christ is a scandal to the Jews. Diba? A stumbling block to the Greeks and a scandal. So, Paul is alluding to that. Kaya natitisod sila because they could not expect and believe that the Messiah would die on the cross. For the Jews, anyone hang on the cross is a curse. So it's scandalous for them. But for the Greeks, this is nonsense. How can a, how, how, how come someone who is criminal, criminally charged, would be our Savior? For them, that's ridiculous and nonsense. For the Jews, scandalous. And Paul said, if I am still preaching the circumcision as the way to enter and be considered part of the family of God, therefore, the, in that case, the offense or the scandal of the cross has been abolished. Jesus Christ was just one of the criminals that was crucified. In the, if that's the truth, if that's the case. But we know, sabi ni Paul, that's not the case. So as for those agitators, look at this. I don't know if this is allowed <laughs> For us readers today, we may look at this statement of Paul as, pwede ba yan? Sa isang pastor, sa isang apostle to say those words. But listen, it's recorded. As for those agitators and, bit, and uh, intruders, I wish, ay, dalangin ko lang, or I wish lang, that they would go the whole way and emasculate themselves. Those who were telling you to be circumcised and forcing you and compelling you and even to the point of persecuting you, those who are forcing you to be circumcised, I just wish for these agitators, yung mga yon, kung sino man sila, I wish that they would go all the way to emasculate, alam yung word na to cast, castrate themselves. Putulin na lang kaya nila lahat. Wag lang yung foreskin. Bad talaga. Parang, Hello, Paul. Point of order. Medyo hindi acceptable sa 21st century. And in our time, maybe very scandalous tong statement ni Paul. For our time. But during that time, 
and the, the case of Apostle Paul, that's how important for Paul the truth of the gospel that he was preserving for our sakes as well. I like this. As for those agitators, I wish that they would go all the way and emasculate castrate themselves. In other translation, nung panahon po, in some pagan cultic churches or temples, the priests that were serving, they were castrated, lala, ang mga lalaki. Pinuputo lahat. Para po, ang tawag doon, eunuchs. But in Deuteronomy, the eunuchs are not allowed to worship Yahweh in the temple. So in other words, Paul, malis na lang kaya kayo. In other words, ha, the implication, if we can paraphrase it, I just wish for this agitator to just leave. Leave the church alone. Totally cut it off. Who cut you in? Okay, the play of words. Eh? And the circumcision. So, that's my wish for them. That they would go all the way and make themselves eunuchs. Because if the eunuchs are not acceptable, so maybe as well, leave the church alone. You, my brothers and sisters, you were called to be free. Here's our title. As for you, now we are done with agitators. As for you, my dear brothers and sisters, you were called to freedom. Called to be free, but do not use your freedom. Here comes Paul. Do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh, the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. Wow. Faith working through love. Why? Because yeah, hindi nga tayo legalist. Baka naman masyado naman tayong relax. That, oh, ay, anyway, I am saved. Anyway, I have been truly free. I am free to have many girls, many wives, many uh, concubines. I am free in my lasciviousness. I am free in my immorality. What? No, no, no. Paul said, do not use your freedom to indulge your flesh. The sinful nature, the sinful ways, you have been set free from that. So freedom is not a license to do what we want. Pinalaya ako ng Diyos, so wala nang rules. I can do whatever I want. No, 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 no. So I am free from all the moral. No, no, no. Faith working through love. And Paul would elaborate that later in the, in the next verses. You're called to freedom, but here comes the warning of Paul. Remember, Galatians, I don't want you to go out of the church and say, Ah, I am free, so I can do whatever I want. No, no, no. But do not indulge going back to your old way of life. In Ephesians, Paul would say, you were dead in trespasses and sin. Don't go back to them. You are now alive in Christ. You have been changed. Don't live like the pagan who would sleep around. That's why one of the comments of a historian in the first century about the Christians, they don't sleep around. They're faithful to their spouses. They're living a holy life. They're living a moral life. That's the expression of their freedom. In the practical way, rather serve one another humbly in love. Magtulungan, maglingkod sa bawat isa ng may pag-ibig. Because love was, was a distorted thing in the, in the first century, in the, in the former age. It was only in the new age that love has been restored as a genuine kind of expressing self-giving love demonstrated by the Messiah himself. Love was selfish before. Love was self-focused. Love, love in those days was different. But in the love that demonstrated by the Messiah, it is a self-giving love, the agape, the self-giving, not self-receiving love. That our freedom in Christ <coughs> is actually expressed in serving others through love. For the entire law, Paul now, anyway, we're just talking about the law. Okay, let me say this. For the entire law, the Torah, or the moral law, is fulfilled in keeping this one command, echoing Jesus' words. Somebody asked Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? Diba? And then Paul used that and said, the keeping this one command that will fulfill all the law is to love your neighbor as yourself, quoting Leviticus. You want to know what the law, how to fulfill the law of God? It's love. Because if you love your neighbor, you would not spread bad things about him. You would not do evil things about him. You will not covet. You will not lie. You would 
That's a beautiful illustration, the beautiful explanation of Paul. So, freedom in Christ is not license to do what we want, license to sin. But it, freedom in Christ is also not, not, not disregarding the law, the moral law, but actually fulfilling the law by love. Because when you do love with the love of God, you're actually fulfilling what the moral law requires. Loving God and loving others as yourself. If you bite the last verse, if you bite and devour each other, contrary to the love, watch out, sabi ni Paul, or you will be destroyed by each other. Now, he's, he's talking to the Galatian as a church. You have been called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Remember that. And this freedom does not give you the license to indulge to your sinful nature or in your sinful nature. But this freedom is actually expressed in serving humbly others in love. And this kind of freedom is loving your neighbor as you love yourself. This is the fulfillment of the law. That if you do and respond to the freedom, you're not actually violating the law. You're actually fulfilling it because of, the, because of what Christ has done and demonstrated the true love, loving God, and loving others. When you love God first, that love will enable you to love others. And in the way, fulfill the law. So the true freedom that we have is not licensed to sin or live the way we want to live. It is not disregarding the law, but it is actually serving through love. Yun ang tamang expression ng freedom. Pastor Boots, anong ibig sabihin? What does it mean to be truly free? To be truly free is not only to live our lives for God, but to live in service for others. Why? Because if we are not free, we're selfish, you don't want to serve. Pride comes, the way, comes in the way. So if a person who is not truly free will not serve, why would I serve? They should serve me, see? But Jesus said, I did not come to be served, but to serve. The expression of freedom, malaya kang maglikod kung sa kagustuhan mo. You're not, you're not being obligated. You're doing it with all your heart because of the goodness of God in your life. Wow, beautiful. And you know what? That is demonstrated in the church. The church is the community that models it to the world. We are the new creation community, the people of God that demonstrate what love is in this world. That's why Jesus said, if you love one another, the world will know. Start loving one another, the world will know. They will see. That's the fruit that you may bear much fruit in John 15, that when you love one another, oh, how beautiful is that? And Paul said, if you bite each other, if you live in contrary to that calling, it will destroy you as a community of God. Destroy your testimony and your reputation outside. Stop biting and devouring each other. Of course, because of the, <clears throat> maybe the response of the Galatians could be they hated the agitators or it has created factions already in the church and they start to devour and bite each other because of the implication of these intruders and agitators has polarized the church and they started to bite and devour each other. And Paul said, hey guys, go back to the drawing board. We are the community of God set free and the expression of that freedom is not living as a license to do what we want but it is actually demonstrated in serving one another in love. How are we in Singapore in relation to this? We have been set free as well. And how do we demonstrate that? How do we demonstrate that freedom in the school, in the office, at home, in the church, as a community? Service. That when you love, you serve. And you serve God and you serve the community in love. So, before we close, I just want to highlight this. There are actually enemies of our freedom in Christ. Watch, watch out for the enemies, the dangers that is present then and also present among us today. There are actually two dangers that we have to avoid and to pay attention. We have to watch out for the enemies of the Christian freedom. Yung tinatawag nilang legalism and libertinism. Ano ibig sabihin nila? Yung legalism, you can actually sway to the left or to the right. Eh. When you have been set free by Christ, you can actually become very legalistic and that is happening in our churches today. In the modern church, ang daming mga rules and church. That's why in, in Acts 15, 
the, the apostles concluded, let us not make it difficult for anyone who are turning to God. Wag nyo nang pahirapan. Wag nyo nang big added rules eh. And we are sometimes guilty of that as a church. Not only us, all the churches sometimes are guilty. All the regulations and the rules, some are, some are good. Good for the good of the ministry, as a guidelines. But sometimes we have to evaluate. Baka naman masyado tayong pinahihirap. Gusto lang naman mag... Pastor, gusto ko lang mag-arrange ng upuan. Tapos ka na ba ng BDO? Tapos ka na ba ng ganyan? Eh, gusto ko lang po mag-arrange ng upuan. Baka naman... Maybe, maybe we make it so difficult for people to serve and express themselves to God. Masyado tayong madaming regulations sa church. Man-made regulations. I'm not saying those things are wrong. Ilagay natin sa tama. Don't put it as a burden. Ang hirap naman dyan. Ang hirap. Gusto mo nang maglingkod eh. Of course, there are some rules that we have to respect. Not everyone can... Pastor, pwede ba akong kumanta dyan? Of course, may guidelines kami. Di ba? Kailangan nakatama yung tono. Kasi may hirap naman yung pakinggan nyo na lang po yung... Basahin nyo na lang yung lyrics. Not my tone. May hirap naman po yung... Uh, sana po itong kakantahin ko, basahin nyo na lang po yung lyrics, mabless po kayo, wag na yung boses ko. Ay, di basahin na lang natin. Kasi baka, baka dahil sa pagkanta, hindi, na, hindi kami makakonsentrate sa pagbabasa. I'm not saying those rules and guidelines are bad. But sometimes we can go to the extreme. Eh. Without naman rules, di labo-labo, hindi rin maganda. Itama lang natin. Okay, mga kapatid, pati-pati pa rin tayo. Wala tayong galit-galit. So, what I'm trying to say is that we can actually say to the left, go to the left of legalism that were very legalistic, rigid, that it becomes a burden. Akala ko ba binigyan tayo ng rest ni Jesus? Come to me and I will give you rest. Sa church na yan, ang hirap. Pagod na pagod na lang lagi ang buhay ko dyan. Ang daming regulations. Wag naman. Or, we go to the extreme right of libertinism, ito yung walang moral, wala nang guide, walang todo bali na. Very low moral, uh, moral guidelines. They can do whatever they want. No. Let's have the balance of our freedom. And the balance of that is expressed in serving others through love. Amen? So this is our takeaway. Our freedom in Christ. Yung ating pong natanggap, the freedom that we have received in Jesus listen carefully, is expressed in serving others through love. Ang totoong malaya, pinalaya ni Kristo, malayang naglilingkod ng may pag-ibig. Kaya nga ang ganda eh. And that is best demonstrated first in the church and the way we live our lives outside. Makikita sa office, sa school, wherever you go, you have a servant heart that you're humble enough. Because in the world, in the previous world, in the way the world before runs, not in the, in, in, the, in the community of the Messiah, it is more of agawan yan eh. Pakita ang gilas ka. You have to show yourself. You have, wag kang paaape. You show your pride. Those who are in the Messiah, the world can see the humility and Paul would describe that later. The life of those who are in the new community are demonstrating that freedom. Amen? And here's my challenge for all of us. Quoting from Apostle Paul himself, let us serve one another humbly in love. Because in the community of God, diba? neither Jew nor Greek, slave or free, male or female, is no longer defined by the ranks and distinctions and so on and so forth. We're one family. We're serving one God. Serve the Lord in whatever capacity. And do it in love. Do it through love. You're doing it not because of recognition, you're doing it not because of points. You're doing it not because of rewards or any compensation. You're doing it because you love God and you love the people of God.